if you want to build a significant economic pillar, whether you call it the third pillar, the second pillar, the first pillar, whatever pillar, it is a pillar which must provide employment, business opportunities, uh, government revenue, and it has to make a significant impact on our economy. I got some statistics the other day that in 2050, which is just around the corner, trust me, it's not too far away, the, the population of the world will be over 9 billion people. And the, the true challenge for us moving into the future is how we will feed ourselves. And if you rely on the outside, when the food gets scarce, outside is going to take care of outside first. And who will take care of you? And what will you do when the ships stop coming and the shelves in the supermarkets become bare? We cannot afford to rely on others to feed ourselves. And I celebrate the farmers and the fishers who have held the strain through this time when our focus has shifted. And I also celebrate our farmers who have seized the opportunity. Like the Crickies, I uh, acknowledge the Virgin God of Fishing Cooperative who have seized the opportunity and see that food production is something that has economic benefits. It has social benefits by reducing unemployment. It has health benefits for us. And the way that we have been able to utilize technology with the hydroponics to be able to introduce modern farming and also modern fishing practices. It is very important. We have been working for you. You have to build a foundation to be able to build a key economic pillar. One was legislation. We got the legislation done, which is the Food Security and Sustainability Act, um, Act 20, I believe it's 2022. Okay? And we have to bring that act into force and we have to produce the regulations. And the contract for the persons who will be drafting the regulations is in the Attorney General's chambers. Of course, these things for us politicians always take too long and for the people out there who need the legislation it always takes too long but of course we will continue to push to make sure that government delivers more efficiently and more effectively and while we put the resources in place of course to build a key economic pillar you need land i'm so grateful for uh honorable vincent wheatley when Anigara made, uh, when he was lands minister, 40 acres of land available. And we're going to make Anigara the breadbasket of the entire BVI because Anigara has flat land and lots of it. And we will use that flat land. I have been in discussions with the Caribbean Development Bank. I've spoken to some private banking institutions like Republic Bank who have made a, a, a real commitment to agriculture and a place like Anigada, we can get financing to build more hydroponic stations, more greenhouses, our poultry houses. And we have the land, of course, which can form the collateral to be able to do that. And that's just the beginning. Of course, we know in Parakita Bay, uh, we've made land available for farmers for many years. And of course, the department, we have a, a, a land management committee which has put in place some draft leases and a, a process, a transparent and fair process for the allocation of crown uh, land for farming purposes. And that is a model that we want to repeat on every single island. And Anigara and Tortola, we see some movement. But the next area, where you're going to see some movement is Jasper Van Dyke and Virgin Gorda. 
because we have acres and acres of land around the Long Bay area that we are going to make available under the same premise as I just spoke about for Anigada and for Tortola because you cannot farm without land. And of course, to, to, to farm, to do any significant farming, you need water. Now, the department has drafted a water policy and this water policy will soon be consulted on with all the key stakeholders. Somebody mentioned financing. Uh, this administration made monies available through the money services. Those persons who send MoneyGram and Western Union. A percentage of that money goes into a fund to fund agriculture and fisheries. And on funding as well, we this uh, legislation that we passed, the Food Security and Sustainability Act, provides for the establishment of a statutory body, the Virgin Islands Agricultural and Fisheries Authority. And this authority will provide grants. I know grants are a hot topic, but all over the world, governments subsidize farmers and governments provide assistance to their people in a fair, transparent way where the guidelines are known and it's not prone to abuse. So we'll be able to, through an authority like that, provide grants to farmers and also provide financing to farmers. This Virgin Islands Agricultural and Fisheries Authority will function somewhat like a development bank. Because of course, you know, we had a development bank which is which primary purpose was there to solve the farmers and our fisher folk. Yes. So we have some of the foundations in place now to be able to bring that 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 third economic pillar, that significant economic pillar. And just as we said before, uh, we import mostly everything that we eat. Some persons see that as daunting. I see it as opportunity. We have a great deal of opportunity and we have competitive advantage considering the fact that we are right here. We don't have to wait for anything to come across the waters. We don't have to uh, worry about all the spoilage that happens when you ship from all across the world. And you don't have to worry about all of the, 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 the unhealthy pesticides and unhealthy uh, fertilizer and things like that, which are and hormones which are going into your food. And that will give us health security. It will give us food security in the event of natural disasters. My name is Dr. Harlan Van and I'm the current chairman of the Paraquita Bay Lands Management Committee which is tasked with the responsibility for ensuring that the agricultural lands of Perkita Bay are managed according to the guidelines that the government of Northern Ireland have set up for the proper management of the agricultural lands of Perkita Bay. The mandate for the Agricultural Lands Committee has three, four, one, we are responsible for making recommendations to the Cabinet of the Northern Islands regarding the leasing of lands at Paragita Bill for agricultural purposes. Two, we are responsible for ensuring that a management of practice or best practices for those agricultural lands are established. So basically, um, We've been working on ensuring that there are guidelines and rules, etc., as to how the agricultural lands should be utilized and appropriately managed. Uh, in addition to that, we hear or we are tasked with handling some of the particular concerns, specific concerns, such as the incorrect use of the land for other purposes outside of agricultural uses. So the committee itself does not determine who gets the lease or who does not get a lease. 
uh, what we do is make recommendations based on the applications that are sent in. Uh, when we came in, we had a few applications that were pending. Um, we reviewed those and made recommendations on about three of them to the government of the day. Uh, we've completely re-looked and revamped the lease itself uh, for the Parakeet domain lands, which we've sent forward for cabinet approval. We still are wait we are waiting full cabinet approval on the lease, on the proposed lease. Uh, we've also revised the application form and process uh, to ensure that we have a streamlined application form that gives us all the information we would need. So the work that the Agricultural Lands Committee thus far has been doing has largely been behind the scenes. Uh, and ensuring that we have a framework before we actually come publicly to really explain what we'll be doing going forward from here. Our intention is to have public engagement for the farmers and from the, for the general public uh, to let persons know exactly what we'll be doing going forward once we get to the point where we're, we're going to ensure that leases are appropriately redone and of course there are persons who are applying for new leases at Parabita Bay. So we want to streamline and ensure everybody has the same level playing field and understanding and they're governed by the same rules at Parabita Bay. Um, what's, what's the advantage of having an approved lease? One would ask. There are a couple of things. Uh, for farmers that may want to seek, for instance, financial um, uh, or economic assistance through a banking institution, for example. As it is right now, they cannot present anything that would say that creates a collateral or anything like that. So it will be difficult for persons who need to expand or do more and uh, depending on a banking institution to get that finance, for example. Um, it also gives the farmer more security in ensuring that no, no one can say that they're not legally bound to that property at this moment and that they're squatting. And so even though there's been a situation before where there's a lot of arrangements that have been made word of mouth, you need to have a legal arrangement so that nobody can say to you, you need to take up the crops for example tomorrow and all the hard work that you put in and effort will go down the drain. So we have to ensure that farmers are better secure and that they have the necessary tools, equipment, resources, and they're operating in a manner that's going to be sustainable for the long term. And of course, we want to ensure that maximum benefit is being derived from the limited agricultural lands that we have in the territory. So we need to make sure that the lands are producing and doing the most that it can for the territory of these work lands. We here in the Nine Nations, we take agriculture very, very seriously because the record shows at one point, Virgin Gala used to produce a lot of food, cattle, tomatoes, pomegranates, um, cucumbers, um, you name it, pineapples, bananas, grown provisioned by the tons, and they were shipped to St. Thomas. They were shipped to Tortola, also in Enegada. We used to provide a lot of food to the USVI, the Danish West Indies at the time, and to like St. Thomas, St. Croix, and so forth. We need to get back to that place. Since tourism has come on board, persons have kind of left our agriculture or historical activities and move into tourism. Our job in this day and age is to bring it back because food security is extremely important to us. We've seen the upheavals of the Ukraine war. We've seen the effects of, of, of gas prices, oil prices, and the cost of food coming into the territory. We have to mitigate against these things getting worse. Over in Enagara, we have allocated during my time 40 acres, not four, but 40 acres of land to be used by farmers. 
whether it be livestock farmers or pig farmers or, or crop farmers, to make sure that they have the tools, the land ready to go and start producing food at a very high level once more. On Enigada, we're going to do this very, very same thing. We have some excellent farmers on both islands right now who are doing a phenomenal job. People like Stanley and Roger Nada, persons like Bongo do, doing his, his bees and Janai doing his thing. And you have Ivory Paradise here and Roger Nada doing their thing. On Enigada, you have Liberty Farm, Mr. Kishman Levens. You have persons like um, Lionel Smith. And in Congress, other persons who are serious about farming. We're going to assist these persons financially and with land. And the sooner we get this done, the better. We have to also make sure farmers have a, a, an, an affordable supply of water. We have to get, what it means, getting, um, getting dam, building dams or securing better wells or something. But we must get back to where we were. I said, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not really making the wheel. We are simply doing what we used to do from before. My name is Arundel Cricky and my farm is Agri Paradise BG located in the South Island of Virgin Gold. At Agri Paradise we grow uh, lettuce, a uh, loose leaf head and we also grow uh, mixed oak leaf lettuce. We market our produce to right way at Basel, right way in Virgin Gold, soon to be right way in Rotong, Staycation, the Chef Pantry in North South. Shea Bamboo on Virgin Water, Sebastian's in, in Tortola. We have been growing lettuce since 2018. I do see a future in it. it the, the demand for fresh produce is a high demand in the British Virgin Islands, so there is a future for what we do. And we, our goal is basically to reduce the number of lettuce that are coming into the territory, you know, year by year. My name is Mervyn Charles. Um, I've been doing some small projects, some raised beds. Uh, for those of you who don't know what raised beds are, it's a concept of engineering soil and encapsulating them into a bed uh, to, to get the yield that you want, whether it's small yield, big yield, herbs, whatever. And it has a lot to do with the mixture of the, the soil and the nutrients and all that. Recently, I've been contacted by Agriculture and the minister about putting uh, a similar concept in place for people who want to do uh, their home, home gardens, little homesteads, um, and they don't know how to. Uh, so what I have is a turnkey concept that allows you to manage the water, manage the nutrients, manage the growth, and uh, manage the germination. Depends on what you want to do. The rated program, I think, is, is, is a very optimistic look at um, agriculture and, and just people who don't have the time. Uh, you set it and you just forget it, um, kind of uh, thing like that. But I want to, to, to help youngsters and people who don't know people who have no idea, who just wants to grow. And hopefully, you know, it works out, somebody catches on and then they can take it to the next level. Uh, but I think bringing youngsters together to, to do something where they can carry it on and maybe do something for their neighbor or turn it into a small business, who knows? But we'll be doing everything from herbs, uh, lettuce, kale, chai, you know basically all herbs and a lot of greens um, it, it's, it's very expandable so the sky is the limit if you want to do 10 beds we can do 10 beds if you want to do 100 beds you can do 100 beds and it all ties into the same mainframe logistically to produce the crop that you want I've been doing this since uh, since the end of the hurricane um, since the recovery period and I've, I've done a lot of uh, gardens for people who up until now is still healing. Um, and they call me just to look at it and there's nothing to be done because it's all covered. Um, ground covered, irrigation, timers. Uh, people just don't have any work to do, no weeding, nothing. Just go and pick a handful of greens, go have a salad 
and the next day come and look at it again because the irrigation gives you all that you need to keep your plants going so it's basically a hands-off turnkey type uh, concept and that's why I I made the decision to try and get a patent for it and I'm working on that <laughs> you know um, you can do one on your balcony uh, and you can take the same one and expand it and do 20 in your backyard and all the stuff that you need to to make this happen you can buy right here on island so i'm open for a lot of people and anybody to contact me um you know i'm quite busy doing stuff but you know i i can put this together in a matter of a week or two and it's yours to operate and it, it's fun and and that's why i do it and you know going forward i'm happy to collaborate with the ministry of agriculture to do some of these bed and supervise and basically do a mentorship and apprenticeship program for anybody who wants to come and have a hands-on, have a go at it. Again, we said farmers and fishers building the third pillar of the economy. When you hear about farmers and fishers building something, building the economy, from where I sit in the office and I review how our farmers and fishers are going about their day to day. In our meetings, we discuss how are we going to help farmers and fishers move their businesses forward, whether it is through financing, whether it is through giving the, the appropriate technical advice. We are and we have develop a plan where we are going to focus more so on training our farmers and fishers going forward to be more self-sufficient as well as where we are also participating in training and understanding the needs of our farmers and fishers. It is very important that at a department level we provide the support necessary for them to survive for them to move from one level to the next that might mean uh training in business it might mean training in technology it might mean where we are partnering with organizations international and regional organizations to come and provide that level of support to our farmers and fishers and what i can say is so far we have been able to partner with regional and international organizations to provide that level of training to our farmers and fishers and throughout the months these meetings are being held around the territory where especially our fishers have begun to organize and come together for a better today and future. It is where I sit, we are committed. I am committed, my team is committed to ensuring that we provide farmers and fishers with opportunity. Not only that, we want to push our farmers and fishers to, to go and get other financing to ensure that the vessels that they have are renewed. To also push where banking is important. Again, we can't build our businesses by doing the same thing today and not expecting changes to happen. We believe that by tuning into the resources out there, farmers and fishers will definitely be on the right path for progress. On Saturday when we opened, we had a panel discussion. And that panel discussion shed some light on where we are in the industry of farming and fishing. For some, they might say it's grim. Others might say it's a, it's a long road ahead. I am looking at it as opportunity. There is a lot of opportunity in farming and fishing. There's a lot of opportunity in apiculture. There's a lot of opportunity if we definitely sit down, go to the drawing board, draw our plans and progress forward. 
there is opportunity for organizations, for supermarkets, for those private organizations to join with farmers and fishers. Create funding, create avenues where they can build together. Farmers and fishers can't do it by themselves. Private organizations must join the fight. Our families must join the fight. Those who have retired must join the fight. This is where we are. We are in a place of opportunity. We are in a place where we can make history. A little small little nation can do exploits.